baptized, mentioned in a comment, is the Nordic Council of Ministers' um, collaboration on regional development. So we are funded by the Nordic Council of Ministers and we work across all the five Nordic countries plus Greenland, uh, Faroe Islands and the Orland Island. But we are located in Stockholm and uh, do comparative research a bit like OECD. And I'm going to talk to you about green growth and the change to green transition. And um, because at Nordregio we work, um, have done quite a lot of different kinds of research on good practices within bioeconomy development. And you could say bioeconomy is not the minerals and metals, but it has there's a lot of linkages uh, when you come up to the north. We do not lo uh, work on the scientific aspects. We do work on the socioeconomic aspects and on the regional issues here. And if you look at that diagram, in the, in the so-called biocircular economy, we can, from IDS, which is Institute of Development Studies, this is the academic way, they uh, have taken on this biocircular economy, talking about from the fossil to the biocircular, and from the throwaway to the circular economy. And um, why is this so important to mention here, together with the new EU development policies? Of course, there is a discussion, a dispute about growth versus transition. Do we need... Uh, grows in the future and within the EU development policy one promotes an inclusive green economy that generates growth, jobs and helps to reduce poverty through sustainable management of these, this natural capital. Um, that said, if you look to, on the figure to the right, this shows the complex bioeconomy that we are moving towards. The petroleum economy was quite simple in many ways. This is fixed carbons, while the bioeconomy is, um, is living uh, resources. We have a lot of opportunities, a lot of different resources, which creates opportunities for rural areas, and we can produce them in many different ways, whether it's waste or seaweed or forest or uh, marine biomass, uh, we can produce all what we produce from the fossil, from the bio. It gives opportunity for rural areas, but it also gives challenges for the transition. It's not only about technologies, it's about how we create the institutions around it. It needs a new organization, it needs new types of regulation, who owns, land use was, and uh, user rights was mentioned earlier today, how we organize them. It needs new skills, new education, and the, in that way to create innovation and entrepreneurship. If I would mention what's typical Nordic, I would say it's the regional helix and the clusters. And it can be triple, quadruple, quintuple helix, depending on how many stakeholders sit around the table. And it's also a lot of clusters. Some of the research we did at Nordregio um, some few years ago tried to put these things together where we talk about bioeconomy, circular economy, industrial symbiosis, clean tech, and now also the new digitalization. How are these linked together? Providing a lot of new ways of, and a lot of new opportunities. Um, these bio, but also the mineral resources, they are dispersed and they're very diverse and they are all around us, giving good opportunities for a lot of our rural and coastal areas. The cross-sectoral, as we discussed, that means that new silos or new sectors, new types of stakeholders have to work together. But they also create competition about use. How should we use and manage the forest? And what should we use the mining uh, resources for? There's a lot of power and interest and money in that if, we are, if they are scarce. So we have to rethink our value chains, our, these ecosystems and the business uh, models that we're using and creating new skills and education. Uh, some of the projects that we did um, are mapped on here. 
Uh, we had about 50 cases within circular economy, within bioeconomy, blue growth, clean tech, and also for green cities and municipalities. And you can see where they're located, located around here in, on the map. The two which are marked with green around, that's number 47, which is up in the, the Kemi area in Finland, and one which is in Denmark, which is not actually in this case, but it's uh, an upcoming development in a rural area in Denmark. Uh, the, the Finnish case is the Kemi Tornio industrial symbiosis. It's in the Lapland region, which has a smart specialization strategy, as well as they have in North Karelia. They, I think they're quite similar in many ways. They have a mining and steel industry, they have forestry and industrial service. And they have, I think they have benefited or created a value way based on a lot of different industrial side streams, waste from mills, uh, soil re redemiation uh, due to uh, polluted land. Um, they have... Um, uh, they use ashes uh, to, uh, for the open pits. Uh, they deal with the um, slag, I don't know the English word actor, and treatment of that. There's a lot of different types of side streams which they have developed new uh, businesses and industries on. Some of our colleagues calculated 1.3 tons of byproducts. Okay, I'll turn to the next one, which and, and it's similar to North Karelia. We heard about a lot of regional support, facilitation, etc. I want to turn to the Danish case because it's new. Um, it's in the rural part of Denmark. It is not with a mining area. You know, Denmark only have calcium in their ground. But they utilized a new, the, the resources which was the, the infrastructure, natural gas net and power net, which you can see to the right in a way. And they have created a, a business park, 60 hectares, which has uh, an organization where the businesses work together. The municipality there owns 50% of the, uh, in the local board of this organization in the cooperative. And there's created, um, economic transfer. This is a circular economy thing, so the companies are both consumers and suppliers of each other's energy and resources. Um, they have managed to get a lot of global investments due to a lot of initiatives uh, on networking from the municipality and the organization around. One of the interesting products that they produce is uh, marine protein. And where does that come from? The Lim Fjord in Denmark is full of uh, sea oysters. They are an invasive species and you can use that as protein for the Danish pig and poultry production. So that is a new local product. Otherwise, they of course, have wind turbines, solar uh, panels, biogas um, uh, from both manure and from the local power plant. What's the last, this is more or less my second last uh, slide. What's the learnings from that? It takes a human to drive a green transition. They have a trust-based culture. It's a small region, small municipality. They have experience in setting up new businesses. The municipality has been very involved in the dialogue between the global investments and the local ownership. So they sit around the table and they deal with the processes, as Risto also mentioned earlier. So as one of the people working there, which is a humanist a scientist, she says, culture eats strategy for breakfast, meaning that culture is more important than strategies very often, and they have a culture working together. Business is important in sh to ensure the viability of the whole ecosystem or the industrial symbiosis. And they have a situation out there, and that's what needs too, that call for action. It's a rural area, aging population, lack of skilled labor, etc. All done through t using human, uh, the human resources. So to summarize, it's in the end, it's all about people and institution, much more than about cost efficient technologies. These days, we have a lot out there to utilize from. It's about value chains, ecosystem, and business models. 
And uh, to highlight networks and stakeholders matter, and the local and regional authorities have a lot of power. They can invest, they can do public procurement, they can facilitate, and they can help to uh, set up the new skills in many ways, collaborate with the local institutions, and invite the research out there as well. And finally, local ownership and accept is of course key to have it to run in the long run. I have some publications, I have some references, so more to come. <laughs>